Hello there, Mr. Sutton here with this lesson on degrees, radians, and reference angles. For this one, we're going to be converting back and forth between radians and degrees, and we will also be figuring out how to find reference angles. For our warm-up, we're going to see that the number 180 is a very important number when we're talking about degrees and radians, so see how many factorizations of 180 you can write out. I'll give you the first one for free. 1 times 180. There, don't say I didn't give you anything. Pause the video, see how many you can get. So starting at 2, we've got 2 times 90, 3 times 60, 4 times 45. Next one's a little trickier, 5 times 36, 6 times 30, and then we also have 9 times 20, 10 times 18, and the last one is going to be 12 times 15. These are good ones to have memorized. We're going to find in this lesson that the actual mathematics is pretty quick, um, but there is a lot of kind of backstory to go over, and it's important. So here's a circle, because we're going to be talking about angles. An angle is an amount of rotation. So here is one possible angle, and we can rotate that as far as we want. We usually use theta, this little uh, zero-looking thing with a line through it. It's a Greek letter to stand for an unknown angle. You can also use x, um, but we use x for other things, so this is why theta tends to get used more for angles than other letters. Now we have two different rays that make up this angle. An initial ray, which is the ray that's fixed on the x-axis, and the terminal ray right here, this is the ray that actually rotates to give you different angles on the circle. The circle is split up by the x and the y-axis. It's split into four quadrants. And each of those quadrants is 90 degrees. Quadrant 1 is the upper right quadrant here. So we have quadrant 1. And you may see this with or without Roman numerals. Quadrant 2, if we're going counterclockwise here. Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Now the angles themselves, positive angles, go counterclockwise. 0 degrees is right here. I guess you could think of this as uh, 3 o'clock. And then it goes up as you move counterclockwise. So this is 90. 180, and 270. Very important to know the locations of those different angles. You can have negative angles. Negative angles are going to go the other direction, clockwise. Um, so instead of going counterclockwise 270 degrees, if you go clockwise 90, you've got the angle negative 90 degrees. And since it's a circle and we can go around multiple times, it is possible to get to the same angle more than once. We call that having coterminal angles. This is when you've got the same angles, but they're 360 degrees apart. Uh, so for example, you could think of zero degrees as 360 degrees, because you'd end up in the same place if you went all the way around the circle. And you can do this with any angle. 90 degrees, for example, we can also call that 450 degrees, and so on. Now that we know the basic idea of what an angle is, let's talk about different ways of measuring it. Angles can be measured in degrees or radians. Degrees you've already seen, and we, we kind of assumed you knew about it when we created this little grid here with these different angles. We know there's 360 degrees to go all the way around a circle. But now, what is this new concept of a radian? Well, a radian is the, the, the same as the length of a circle's radius. It's a distance around the circle that just happens to equal the length of the radius. And since not every circle has the same size, this is going to be different amounts of length depending on what kind of circle you're dealing with. But because it gets adjusted to the length of the circle's radius, there's always going to be the same amount of radians in a circle. Um, so it's really just another way of measuring angles. So how many radians are there in a circle? Well, the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the distance of the radius, which is the, ra the radian length here. Um, so there's 2 pi radians in a whole circle. This 0 degrees or 360 degrees, we can think of that as 0 radians or 2 pi radians. If 2 pi is the whole way around a circle, that means halfway around the circle, 180 is going to be how much? That's right, half of 2 pi, 1 pi. And this is going to help us convert between radians and degrees. We can go a little bit further. 90 degrees is halfway between 0 and pi radians right here. Uh, so 90 is going to be pi over 2 radians. And then 270, halfway between 1 pi and 2 pi, is 1 and a half pi, or 3 over 2 pi. Now you'll notice we don't put any special symbols or even write radians after these radian measures that we have put on this circle. 
Um, and that's because if you don't put a degree symbol on your angle, we assume that you're writing something in radians. So if you mean degrees, that's why you need that degree symbol. Otherwise, you're actually writing in radians. Now, a few of you might be wondering why we need radians. I mean, degrees seem to work perfectly good for everything we've done up to this point. Degrees are usually used in triangle problems, and we'll continue to use them there. Um, but radians we're going to find are very helpful when we graph trig functions and for pretty much everything in calculus. Um, all of the different rules and formulas in calculus assume that you're doing things in radians. So that's why we need them. Let's do a couple problems where we convert from degrees to radians. So 90 degrees, you may already remember what that was from the circle you saw on the last slide, but let's pretend we didn't. Uh, we know that there is pi radians in every 180 degrees. So if you have degrees, we will just multiply by the fraction pi over 180 degrees. The degrees should cancel, and that'll just leave you with 90 pi over 180. Um, then you just reduce the fraction. So this is really just going to be 1 over 2, or pi over 2. Pause the video and take a moment to try the next one here. All right, let's see if you got it. So just like before, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. Um, now, you don't have to do what we did here and write this number in the numerator every single time. I mean, if you know what 160 over 180 reduces to, um, then you can just write the answer. And this is why knowing the factors of 180 is so important. So 160 and 180, what are the common factors? Well, they're both divisible by 20. So we could rewrite this as 8 pi over 9. Now, what if we want to go the other direction and convert from radians to degrees? Um, well, then instead of doing pi over 180, we can do 180 over pi for our fraction. So we've got the pi's canceling. And we can also do a little canceling uh, between the 180 and the 3. That'll be a 60 up here. So 7 times 60, that'll be 420 degrees. Try the next one out on your own. So we've got 180 over pi times this. Again, pi's cancel. 180 over 5 now, we remember hopefully from the beginning that that's three, uh, 36. So 2 times 36, 72. And this is a process, again, if you know your factors of 180, then you can start to do these pretty quickly in your head um, and be a lot quicker at this. To get you some extra practice converting between radians and degrees, here's a quizlet you can go to to do the matching on. We're going to switch gears now to talk about something called reference angles. A reference angle is the angle between the terminal ray, that's your, your moving angle ray there, and the x-axis. So because we're doing basically the angular distance, you could think of it as, between the, the ray and the axis, you're always going to have an, a reference angle between 0 and 90 degrees. And this is going to be a very useful property for what we're doing on later on. Um, but for now, we're just going to figure out what the reference angle is for each of these four angles. Um, so let's say you're in quadrant one already, 40 degrees. If you have an angle that's between 0 and 90 already, then you've already got a reference angle. Um, so all quadrant one angles are their own reference angles. Now how about quadrant two? Let's say we have an angle over here in quadrant two, like 120. I mean, 120 is really more like up here, but let, let's just pretend. Um, so how do we find this angular distance? Well, this line right here is 180. When you get to this halfway part on the circle, you've gone 180 degrees. Um, but let's say your angle has only gone this far. So how do we find this distance? It's going to have to be 180 minus that angle. Uh, so in this case, 120, which is in our second quadrant, we're going to do 180 minus 120, which gives us 60 degrees. So that's how far the 120 angle is from the x-axis. And again, that's going to be important later on. How about third quadrant? So if we have another angle here, we've already gone 180 degrees when we get to this halfway mark, but now we've gone a little bit more. Um, so how do we find out what the little bit more was? We're going to have to do subtraction again, but this time the angle is bigger than 180, so it's going to have to be the angle minus 180. Uh, so in this case, 210, which is over here somewhere, we would have to subtract 180 from that. And if you did it in the wrong direction and got like negative 30, um, just remember a reference angle has to always be positive because it's between 0 and 90. Um, so you would hopefully go back and figure out what you got backwards. Quadrant 4 now, a little bit different. In quadrant 4, the distance between your angle and the x-axis is over here, not over on this side. Um, so in quadrant 4, we need to use 360 now. 
So whatever 360 minus your angle is, that's how much further you have to go to get to the x-axis. So 360 minus 315 then, this would be a reference angle for 315 of 45 degrees. So the key to reference angles is you always want them to be positive, and you're always going to do some kind of subtraction using 180 or 360 because those are your x-axis angles. We never use 90 or 270 because then we would be talking about the y-axis, and we don't care about the y-axis, just the x-axis. Here's a problem where you need to find the reference angle. Uh, pause the video and give it a shot. Now, you had some options on this one. You could have tried to do this in radians, which I never do, or you could convert to degrees. In degrees, this would be, let's see, 180 divided by 4 is 45, converting to degrees now, uh, and then 3 times 45 would be 135. What quadrant is that? Well, that's quadrant 2. So we need to figure out the distance between this and 180. Well, that would be 180 minus 135, which is 45 degrees. Here's another angle we want the reference angle for. So is, are we out of luck here since we have this negative angle? It turns out not. Um, we know that this is going to be the same angle as whatever we get when we add 360 or subtract 360. Um, but if your angle is negative, you probably want to add 360 until you get something between 0 and 360. So let's do that. So negative 130 plus 360, that's 230. And now we can do what we did before to find reference angles. That's in quadrant 3, the lower left of the unit circle. Uh, so we need the distance between that and 180. Uh, so 230 minus 180, that would give us 50. So that's it for this intro lesson on angles. Until next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.